This past weekend, I was on call at the hospital and we had several patients present with hemorrhagic stroke. So let's talk a little bit about what a stroke is and what is a hemorrhagic stroke. Stroke is the equivalent of a brain attack. A heart attack means that blood flow to a muscle in the heart is blocked and the patients have chest pain and radiating arm pain. In a stroke, there is a blockage of blood flow to the brain and the patients have sudden onset of neurologic deficits such as altered mental status or weakness or droopiness of the face or numbness or weakness on one side of the body. In some patients, the, a, a stroke can actually be caused by bleeding into the brain and we call this a hemorrhagic stroke or intracerebral hemorrhage. Dr. Brock, in her rounds discussion this morning, specifically talked about intracerebral hemorrhage and what the management strategies are. First of all, if you or a loved one are experiencing stroke-like symptoms, it's important to seek medical attention. In the emergency room, the emergency team will usually do a CT scan and can identify when there has been bleeding inside of the brain. They will call the neurosurgeon on call for further evaluation. One of the main risk factors for hemorrhage or bleeding into the brain is high blood pressure. Patients sometimes presenting to the emergency room with bleeding in the brain have very elevated blood pressure. So one of the initial treatments is to lower the blood pressure to a safe level. And it's important for all of us to have our blood pressure monitored and treated effectively. Diabetes can be a risk factor for bleeding in the brain, and blood sugars can be elevated in patients that have bleeding, so it's important to lower the blood pressure. Patients that are on anticoagulants, such as Coumadin or Plavix and other kinds of anticoagulants, are especially at risk for bleeding in the brain. Furthermore, if they do have bleeding in the brain, the bleeding tends to be bigger and significantly higher risk. Patients that are on blood thinners that have bleeding in the brain need to be taken off their blood thinners and the effects of the blood thinners, if possible, reversed. If a patient has bleeding in the brain, we typically admit them to the ICU and closely monitor and support them through the course of care. Surgery is sometimes recommended, but most of the time we don't actually do surgery for patients that have bleeding in the brain from that is not traumatic. Um, patients will require therapy and sometimes some intensive care for a while. A blood clot in the brain is a little bit like a bruise on the skin. It evolves over time, it changes color, it can swell, and then it can resorb. And it takes a few weeks for that to occur. During that period of time, patients can have fluctuation of their symptoms. We closely monitor this and check scans over time to make sure the blood is going away. So again, patients sometimes can have stroke, which is a lack of blood flow to the brain. They can have bleeding in the brain, which can cause symptoms of stroke. In either situation, it's important to seek prompt medical attention.